Welcome to episode 2 of the reboot. Today is Sunday night and I have a philosophy paper due next Monday. So the focus of this video is going to be writing my philosophy paper. Since my philosophy paper is due in more than a week from now, the first part of this video is probably not going to be writing my philosophy paper. The title is not clickbait, okay? Writing the philosophy paper it will come. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. My hair looks a little bit wacky because I slept with wet hair last night. The action items for today are to register for courses for next semester and I didn't plan that yet. And then I'm going to go to the lecture series that I attended last week as well. I think that's all. Oh, I'm also going to eat lunch with Andrew today, so let's get started. The one philosophy course that I'm scared of taking is Symbolic Logic, but Symbolic Logic also counts for the science requirement. So I'm thinking maybe I can kill two birds with one stone. Okay, I think I have a good list. So I'm just gonna register. Let's do some laundry. The detergent I use is this one from Muji. They're like Tide Pods, except they don't smell like anything, which is what I like because I personally don't wear cologne or anything like that. I just like smelling like skin, like human smell. I don't know if that makes any sense. When people wear really strong perfumes or when people have like really strong detergent smell, it just gives me a headache. After doing laundry, I started figuring out which paper prompt to choose. There are usually a few prompts that feel manageable, but don't get me excited. And the ones that are interesting are more difficult to pull off. Usually I go with the harder one because when I'm revising my paper for the hundredth time, my excitement for the topic makes it easier. I settled on writing about Heidegger's essay, question concerning technology, and typed out some initial thoughts before meeting my friend Andrew for lunch. salmon today and my favorite cucumber tomato salad. It's, it's like this every day. <laughs> no it's not. They don't have salmon every day. Oh yeah, they have it today. Yeah, that's true. They have it every day. <laughs> While I'm waiting for my laundry, I'm going to go to the bookstore to pick up a book for the discussion tonight. The reading's really short, so <clears throat> should be fine. And also I'll pick up a book for class. And whenever a Columbia professor says go pick up a book, they mean at book culture. Hi, I'm looking for a big book. That one should be downstairs. Okay. We are going to the lecture series again this week and there's only one more session after this one so I'm gonna be so sad when it's over. You said these ones are chicken? This is chicken, this is lamb. Okay. Is anyone coming? The course 
so I just heard it was not working at all yesterday. Yeah, I mean, the only one that I was concerned about was getting these in humanities. Okay, which I know. Uh, so back in my room. Oh, cold. Compared to Chico's place? Okay, well, I like to get salads afterwards. It is currently Wednesday evening and I'm so, so tired. <laughs> it's not even 9 p.m. yet, but I'm ready to go to sleep. I'm meeting my professor tomorrow to talk about my paper. I scheduled an extra meeting with him because I can't go during his office hours. If you've written a philosophy paper before, you know you have to be super, super careful when you're writing. In other humanities classes, you can interpret things differently, but with philosophy, that is not the case. There's a right way to interpret the authors, and there's a wrong way to interpret the authors. And a lot of that depends on your teacher's interpretation of the author. So I feel like I always get really worried when writing philosophy papers if I have the right interpretation or not. So I like to reread the text three times before I even start writing my paper. But I'm really tired right now and I, I want to reread the text again before the meeting tomorrow. So I might wake up really early to do the readings again. All that being said, I think writing philosophy papers is a really useful exercise and that's why I'm majoring in philosophy because I feel like it really forces you to think super critically about ideas and have like a very holistic understanding of philosophers theory and being able to articulate that well without repeating what they said to come up with creative examples to explain their ideas or the weaknesses of their ideas. Wow, the library is so nice when nobody's there. I think I'm gonna try to do this more often, uh, even when I don't have that much work to do because it was just very healing. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, it was very therapeutic. All right, now I'm headed to recitation, which is just like a discussion section for one of my philosophy classes. And I have two back to back, but they're pretty chill. So I don't really have to do any preparation for it other than, you know, the homework for the class. The head is so big today. Like two months more till the Wolf Cup. Back home, like if um, some people, I don't know how they do it, but they like make it narrow and narrower to where it looks like a snake tail. Oh yeah. And yeah, it's like yeah. a sign of being like in a gay. <laughs> or is it that when you braid it? Uh, it's not really braided. It just it looks kind of flaky. <laughs> it's just floppy. Mm, it's actually kind of flowy. It like slithers, bro. I swear. <laughs> what? It slithers. It blows in the wind. Mm -hmm. I whip my hair up in the air sometimes. Saying, hey yo. Today is Friendsgiving dinner, which means they have Thanksgiving themed food, so I'm pretty excited. Should mean that food is pretty good today. Alright, so we got ourselves the bread bowl, the turkey. I put a little bit too much gravy on it. Mashed potatoes, whatever this is, and pumpkin pie. Uh -huh. And I got the Friendsgiving shirt. Yes, sir. Tortellini. I got the bread bowl with broccoli. You got broccoli too? Yeah, me too. And some turkey and sweet potato mash. Oh my god, it's so good. Wait, I can eat this every day. But it was really busy, right? So I had to wait like 20 minutes. We should have went to Ferris, that's where I went. The turkey was so good, it was so dry, but like... Yeah, it looked really dry, but it tasted good. Yeah, it tasted good. I was like, can I have more, please? He's like, yeah, bro, I got you, bro. I'm here to feed you. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Did you get the little pumpkin pies? Oh, I have a pumpkin pie smoothie. That shit was gas. I'm so dead. 
This, I think, is the hardest philosophy paper that I've ever had to write. If you've read Heidegger before, you know he's a very tricky philosopher. So it's been a real struggle, but we're making steady progress. So I'm not too worried. It's better to struggle early rather than struggle late because then you can also ask your professor questions about your paper, having thought through as many problems as you could by yourself. I always try to think about what the possible landmines are in my philosophy paper because sometimes there are certain ideas that I wanna talk about, but I'm not sure if I'm going to hit a landmine. So I make sure to list all of those things as well when I'm talking to my professor so I can make sure I know what not to do in addition to knowing what I should do or should say. I am currently going to go to my friend Alyssa's apartment because she is bunny sitting her friend's bunny. So I'm gonna go to pet the bunny. Okay, it's not raining at the moment, but it is so cold. Can you see my breath? Can you see my breath? It's so cold. I am not dressed for this weather. All you do is eat, huh? Mm hmm Oh, they're annoying me. No. <laughs> I was like, okay. I guess so. We want to put it that way. She's so big. Usually, like, field rabbits are very small. Maybe wild rabbits could be this big if they were pampered so much. Maybe. I am eating lunch with my friend Lon, and she said she's in the library, so I'm gonna go look for her. Let's see if she's in the main room. Are you the, the event planner of the family? My oh. brother and I are doing it. Oh, that's good. My dad would not know where to start. Is it that's good? Real. Is it good? <sighs> I finished the paper. I finished the paper. I'm so happy. Whenever I write other papers, I think, oh, you know, this is good enough to get an A. It'll be fine. But when I write a philosophy paper, I think it needs to be perfect. Otherwise, it's not good enough because if it's not perfect, it's not going to get an A. So one strategy I use is to print out my papers and just read them through and mark them up because I think seeing them on paper really changes your experience of reading it. Once you're so used to reading it on a screen, you start to stop noticing certain things. So I print it out, mark it up, in some parts where I thought I was really cooking, you know, and saying something good. It doesn't read the same way when I print it out and I think, ugh, I was not cooking there. I need to fix that, delete that, or something, because it's not working. Shower in the dark. You showered in the dark? Mm -hmm. Wait, the light turned off? No, I turned it off. Oh, why did you do that? Because I was feeling experimental. Oh. Now, I feel like a new man. That was... An incredible experience. I'm recording my outro for my video. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I finished my paper, so I'm going to print it out and turn it in tomorrow. I lost my train of thought. I'm printing my paper. I always bring my mini, mini stapler in case there's no staples because only delinquents turn in their papers without stapling them.